Thank you, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. Before we get into this episode, I got to give a special shout out to some of the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, my guy Robert D, uh, Jordan, Arthur, David, Paul. Uh, just appreciate everybody that's become a Team Keep It Clean patron, especially uh, with everything that's going on, as y'all know. Shout out to Freelance and in the building. Um, but I love y'all. I love y'all. Now, um, getting into this first question, uh, it came from my guy, John D., who is also a newer Team Keep It Clean patron. He's been a patron for four days, so I appreciate it, John. Now, um, obviously, with the Ravens placing the non-exclusive franchise tag on Lamar Jackson, um, that does put them about nine mil over the cap. Um, but his question and well, I guess we're going to have to remix it a little bit because his question was, do you think the Ravens can improve their roster if Lamar gets the non-exclusive tag? Um, I'm thinking a 45 mil cap hit would be roster flexibility suicide for the Ravens. So um, obviously this was sent before uh, the Ravens officially placed the franchise tag on Lamar Jackson, but it ended up being the non-exclusive tag. But how does this, as far as them improving their roster, he's obviously referring to free agency. And... Mm, it definitely impacts it big time. I was literally, literally just talking to my guy, uh, Bet, about this on Instagram, about how this impacts free agency. And he said, hey, it, it's, a fun, it's a fun time to be a Ravens fan right now. Well, that was kind of sarcastic. But because uh, he said it's frustrating because it's just so much up in the air and we just got to wait it out. We did, that's all we can do is just wait it out and see what happens. Um, but this, the, the way that this impacts free agency, one, by March 15th, because that's when um, free agency starts. Uh, that's when the Ravens, they have to be under the cap by, uh, by March 15th. They got to be under the cap by then. Right now, according to Brian McFarlane, they're about nine mil over. And we talked about in the previous video some of the potential moves that they could make to get under the cap. So we got to wait and see what happens with that. Um, but then on top of that, um, you're going to want to have some money to sign some players that you may be potentially interested in. Uh, and what my guy Bet had brought out, which was a really good point, like, hey, okay, well, how 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 is the whole thing going on with Lamar going to impact that? And I was like, well, yeah, that, the Ravens they they're gonna want to try to get this whole thing with Lamar sorted out uh, sooner rather than later. But now with Lamar, he he holds the cards with with that. He holds the cards with that because uh, it all depends on obviously what teams are interested in him, what what team what teams he's interested in, but. If he doesn't sign an offer sheet, then that 32 mil just sits there. It just sits there, and nothing can be done about it until uh, Lamar decides, all right, or a team decides, like, all right, we're interested in you. We want to sign you to this offer sheet. And he's like, okay, let's, let's get it. Um, then the Ravens could either match or decline or whatnot. But throughout this whole process, free agency is going to start. Free agency is going to start. So there are going to be players that are coming out of free agency, and the Ravens may want somebody. The Ravens may have, have a guy that they like, a couple guys that they like at different positions or whatnot, and they may be like, hmm, oh, we really like him. And they may even give that person an offer. They may offer that person a deal. But then that person, depending on what position it is and whatnot, offense or defense, it all depends on, on that. But that person may look at the Lamar situation and be like, ooh, I don't know. And whatever's going on with the Lamar situation at that time, that could potentially turn them off from the Baltimore Ravens. Um, there could be guys where the Ravens want to make an offer, but because of everything going on right now, because they, 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 they kind of tied right now, they, they tied up a little bit right now, but because of everything that's going on, they may be like, hey, we ain't got the bread for it. We, we want this free agent, we want that free agent, we want that free agent, but oh, we, we can't really do it right now. Now, of course, when there's a will, there's a way, um, but Ravens, they're they going to have to make a way. They're going to have to figure it out, and they're going to have to figure it out fast. Now, they did... Talk about it, and like, and we knew that they would talk about it. Um, the contingency plans, they 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 have to have that. They have to have contingency plans for every single situation. Again, as a business, as a franchise, as a company, you have to have contingency plans for everything that could possibly and may possibly go wrong, go right, go left, go right, go all that good stuff. Um, so they they better have a plan in place for. Lamar being on this non-exclusive tag. I mean, they got to have a plan in place because they put him on a non-exclusive tag. So they knew the price tag that would come with it would have been about a little over 32 mil um, in cap space. So it's like they, they just got to deal with it accordingly. Uh, but it definitely has a, a big impact on free agency, of course. 
Uh, they've been trying to sign him to a deal, uh, but it just it ain't worked out so far. It ain't worked out so far. So um, the the sooner for for Ravens sake, the sooner that this thing gets cleared up, the better. And that's whether it goes left or if it goes right. Um, but the sooner, but because that will allow them to know exactly how they're going to move forward uh, with everything. And I mean, the same for Lamar, too. The sooner it gets cleared up, whether it goes left or it goes right, the sooner he'll know how he's going to move forward. And whether it's, that's with the Baltimore Ravens or it ends up being with some other team. Um, but as far as free agency, yeah, it does make things more complicated uh, for the Baltimore Ravens on their side. Um, but. Again, this is something that they got to plan for. Sometimes timing can be so funny, man. Um, I'm recording this on uh, March 9th at 11.42 uh, a.m. And just like, wow, right at the end, when we finished that first question about how Lamar's whole thing impacts free agency, and we were talking about how the Ravens, um, with the move and everything, right now they're sitting at about nine mil over the cap. They traded Chuck Clark. They traded Chuck Clark. Like, right after we finished that first question, they traded Chuck Clark. So now, instead of them being 9 mil over the cap, uh, they'll be about 5 mil over the cap. Um, since the move, them trading Chuck Clark to the Jets for a 2024 seventh rounder. So, not even this year, but next year. But anyway, um, that will, uh, yeah, they'll be about 5 mil over the cap now. So, they're getting closer to answer. They still got some more moves to make, so... We still gonna watch out for that, but I just thought that um, I thought it, I thought that was funny, uh, just the timing of everything. But anyway, next question and <laughs> next question uh, came from Raven Pride. He said, "Hey, Raven, how's it going? Think things are going pretty good. I appreciate you, man." Um, he said, uh, "I hope you and the fam are doing well." Uh, and I'm gonna get straight to the point. This organization, the Ravens, is about as dirty as they can be. I mean, you. You, <laughs> I I see what you're saying, but it's NFL. It's, it's a dirty business. Like it's it's. But, but anyway, let's keep going. He said uh, you were trying to destroy this young man by all of your backdoor dirty tricks and think fans are gonna side with you. Oh, there are a lot that will. I mean, it, like. Anyway, let's keep going. He said, I gave my all to the Ravens because I believe that this was one of the most respected organizations in the NFL. When you give this man a non-exclusive tag and teams that know there ain't no Lamar Jackson sitting around and say they say that they will pass, you did a trifling thing by citing owners to not bid on Lamar. And Graven, I say to you, to you, I've been a Ravens fan from day one, but even if the Ravens somehow are able to keep him, um, I at this time will say to you, I lost all respect for this organization. Mm. That's powerful right there. Um, but you, you got to remember, it's a business. It's a business. It's, it's a nasty business, but it is a business. And in business, uh, owners are in business to make money. But then at the same time, while owners are in business to make money, they want to keep all of their own money that they possibly can. And they they don't want this whole guaranteed contract thing. So it, it obviously was... Obviously, Lamar right now is the biggest name with this whole thing. He's sort of the, the pawn in this whole thing. But they, they just don't want this whole guaranteed contract thing to become the norm. So they're going to band together. They're going to just lock in arms together and hold each other's hands and be like, no, we can't let this happen. We don't want this to happen. So... It, I mean, it, that's that's business, man. Next question came from my guy Juan G. He said, Anthony Richardson of Baltimore, you can't deny the guy's talent, just pure power. <laughs> I mean, who knows what's going to happen with the Ravens in their whole quarterback situation right now. It's just so up in the air. Next question came from Miss Too Much, and this was sent before uh, the Ravens applied the franchise tag to Lamar. She said, playtime is over. Push the button. Greetings and Ravens. It's so wonderful to see you smiling and back to your high-level energy. I'm so appreciative to our Team Keep It Clean family for having your back and showing so much love. That's what we need more of. Yeah, Team Keep It Clean, y'all the best, man. It's like straight up, but y'all know that already. Okay, on to the subject we all dread to even consider. Playtime is over. Like the little girl from Rush Hour said, push the button. My friend, I feel it's time for the Ravens to push that button. Let me explain. In my opinion, they've played around with Lamar for five years. They've sucked almost every bit of juice out of him that they possibly could. He's turned this franchise around, made them a winner again, and he's generated a grand amount of revenue for them as well. Yet still, they refuse to properly compensate him. I can envision it now. EDC at the table trying to chip away at the bag by telling Lamar how he loves him, but, well, you know, Lamar, you've been injured the last two seasons. We're concerned about your longevity, yada, 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 all that fodder. And that's, that's expected, though. 
That's expected. Lamar, as a business, as a contractor or whatnot, he got to use everything that he can do to boost his stock up, to boost his worth up. He said, hey, I'm the quarterback. Hey, I got to be the lead in Russia. Hey, y'all don't really give me much to work with. Hey, this, that, and the third. Eric DaCosta, he's got to use everything that he can to bring Lamar's value down. Hey, you missed a handful of games over the last two seasons. Hey, uh, the whole guaranteed contract thing? No, that, that ain't normal. Hey, and, and they're they going to go back and forth. That's negotiations. So it's, it's, it's no shock or surprise or anything like that. But let's keep going. I said, don't get me wrong. To a certain degree, these points can be a concern if one only looks at it on the surface. But we know that the Ravens have overused Lamar and drastically underused the talent they do have and have never acquired any proven elite talent to complement him and their young offensive talent. Well, there you go. <laughs> there's that. And to be honest, I'm having difficulty believing that they will acquire any proven elite wide receivers this season either. Yeah, I agree. Um, she said, yes, they hired Monkin, and I do feel he'll have a positive effect on the offense. Yeah, we hope so. Uh, however, Lamar uh, really has been calling for them to get a dog or two at the wide receiver position. You can tell he wants to have a plethora of weapons, just as most of his counterparts do. But uh, they just haven't been willing to do it. On top of that, they are refusing to pay him, even though he's already earned it. From a business perspective, Steve knows this. He's a billionaire. They see things differently than most. The main reason they don't want to pay him is because they don't want to be the franchise to set that precedent. And yeah, that's something that we talked about a lot, too. Uh, that's really a shame. They believe they are so sure no other owner will pull the trigger and pay him the fully guaranteed bag, but they are wrong. See, I, I think you you were like halfway right with that. You said uh, they, they, they are so sure that no other owner will pull the trigger. Well, they uh, obviously had plenty of conversation with the other owners. And again, you, actually, you're not halfway wrong or halfway right because uh, we'll see. We, we don't know. So I take that back. My apologies. I take that back because... It's not March 15th yet. March 15th, that's when things can start. That's when Lamar can start negotiating. Uh, but we won't know until he signs the offer sheet or the Ravens come to it or whatever happens. We won't know till we actually know. Um, and she continued and said, uh, but they are wrong. So I say push the button. Put the non-exclusive deal on Lamar and see how fast these offers come in. And guess what? It'll be a couple of offers from some of the very owners who've been in those closed door meetings admonishing Steve not to give that guaranteed deal. Uh, but they all said this because they thought Lamar would cave in, but he has not. Trust me, they are all in utter shock. Every one of them lastly, vastly underestimated Lamar and his team's business acumen. See, hey, that could happen. Because again, uh, and, and again, she sent this before, before they put the franchise tag on him. She sent, she sent this way before. So you, like, you, you was on to something right here, but we're going to see. We're going to see. Like, we're going to see what goes down when it comes to uh, starting on March 15th. If them offers start pouring in and whatnot, it's, it's going to be interesting, man, because, yeah, those teams they came out with, well, the reports came out about those teams saying, oh, they're not going to pursue them. Oh, they're not interested. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Go, Kirk. All right. We got to see because they even if they were interested, they can't say anything now. They can't do anything now. So there's that. Anyway, um, she said, but if Lamar becomes available, which the non-exclusive tag essentially makes him a free agent from the sense of how active the market will be if the Ravens pull it, he's not lasting on that tag. Those same owners who never thought he'd be available will eat some humble pie and whatever other kind of pie they are going to offer him, the kitchen sink, and then some. They might even throw in a lawnmower or two, LOL. And sadly, Ravens won't match it. Lamar leaves, goes off, wins a Super Bowl within one or two seasons with his new team. Then where does that leave these Ravens? Oh, and that's, that's going to be something that's interesting, too. Um... If if and when Lamar is offered or signed to an offer sheet, how's it gonna look? How's it how's it gonna be constructed? Uh, and will the Ravens match it? Now I know most people are feeling like yeah the Ravens are gonna match whatever, but we'll, again it's, it's just one of these things we we just gotta wait it out and see. Uh, she also said uh, a pity to think about, but I say if they're not gonna pay him properly and provide true weapons, then do what's best for him. Put the non-exclusive tag on him and let these other teams prove to you just how much of a gem you had. So to my beloved Ravens, let that young man be free to the to be the best version of himself. It's not about you anymore. Lamar made it all about y'all for five long years. You didn't reciprocate, so playtime is over. Recess is out. Push that button. Ain't you no know just what I mean.
I know we a little bit late, but welcome to another episode of Question from Subs. Where you can ask whatever question you want to, and we answer in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it for the team, keep it clean, patrons, y'all can send your question directly on Patreon. Uh, for everybody else, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, and we'll hopefully answer your question in a video just like this. Now, next question came from my guy Jordan. He said, Lamar Jackson, thoughts. Uh, how you doing? Love the content. Been subscribed for a long time, and now my thoughts. Hey, appreciate that, Jordan. He said, my thoughts is the way things are panning out. Lamar has all the leverage. He knows the backlash the front office will get if he walks and goes on to win a ring elsewhere. That is why EDC doesn't want to lose him, but he also isn't an offensive-minded manager. And all, and all the top free agents we had money for in the past, uh, he's skeptical about paying a lot for. Uh, he knows his job will be up for grabs if you cannot replace a QB that's as versatile as Lamar Jackson. My opinion, what the front office will do is sign uh, him to an exclusive tag, hold out until July, uh, and what the draft, and see what the draft will look like. Uh, and if we draft a quarterback in the later rounds, hence Stetson Bennett, then we all know what will happen in July and lobby for more picks while rebuilding. If we do not draft a quarterback and make a logical decision and move up by trading Queen, Chuck Clark, oh, well, you got that one, uh, and other players and invest in an offense that's versatile to what our coordinator wants, then, them, them, then we know we have something good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I want, I, see, that'll be interesting to see if this thing, like, goes beyond the draft um because if it goes beyond the draft then more teams could possibly be a part of it more teams could possibly be interested in Lamar but again it's one of them things we we won't know till we know I don't think um them drafting Stetson Bennett if he even gets drafted because it if he's an undrafted free agent if he doesn't get drafted then I, I I'm like a thousand percent sure Ravens are gonna sign him but I don't think that will have e – either way, like, if he gets drafted, I think he'll get drafted late, like maybe sixth or seventh round. Or if he doesn't get drafted, um, I don't think that'll have any impact on Lamar Jackson at all. Um, but, hey, we'll see how things go. Next question came from my guy Joshua. Hey, he said, the term good faith says a lot. What's going on in Graven? Hope all is well there in Florida. Uh, there is a term that EDC has been throwing around since the tag conversations began. Good faith. It's the same team, it's, excuse me, it's the same term loan companies use to hold on to a client when negotiating a settlement. Right before the end of the month deadline, they essentially settle for a really low good faith payment just so the conversation for the negotiation can continue freely without the pressure of a deadline. Uh, so when EDC says good faith, I interpret it as the March 7th deadline was too soon. Lamar, we're going to give the NFL the tag they want to see just to beat the deadline. But uh, me and you will keep talking under the table in good faith that you'll sign with us before July and not with another team, no matter the offer. Uh, it benefits both parties. Ravens get to pay less and keep more cap space and room. In the meantime, Lamar gets to see his market value and get perspective from the deals coming to Burrow and Herbert. All of this is done in good faith between Lamar and EDC. Raven, do you think this is the case? Anyways, uh, if I read this wrong, I'll need to... <laughs> He said, if I read this wrong, I need to buy a different team's jersey next year. If I read it right, we'll see an extension before July. Have a great day. Appreciate you, Josh. Um, yeah, I mean, with the franchise tag, that's, that's what the franchise tag is. It's, it's an extension on a deadline. Uh, they had till March 7th, like you mentioned, to sign them to a deal. And if they couldn't come up with a deal with them, then they would have to place the franchise tag on them. Then that gives them an additional extension till July 15th, because that's when you can no longer sign your franchise players to long term extensions anymore. And they will have to play under the tag or they can sit out under the tag, whichever they prefer. Um, so, yeah. You're right. Um, now, again, we, we do hope that this, this extension comes with the Ravens. Um, but if it doesn't, I wonder what jersey you're going to have to get. Next question came from my guy Tyler G. He says, Steve Bishotti's way or the highway? And Graven, I can't even say I hope this message finds you well and in good spirits when the Ravens have the entire flock losing their minds as we speak. Now, that non-exclusive tag has been placed on Lamar, and he is now eligible to seek offers from other teams. Do we think this is Mr. Bishotti's master plan? I, I think so for sure. But uh, let me hear you out. Uh, he said, it has been reported multiple times that Super... Oh, Steve Bishotti. I, I was about to say Super Bowl because I saw he put SB. But it has been more <laughs> reported multiple times that Steve Bishotti and other NFL owners were not thrilled when Deshaun Watson was given a fully guaranteed deal last season. However, uh, if another team were to enter the Lamar sweepstakes and offer him a fully guaranteed deal and the Ravens were to match it, would this be Steve Bishotti's way of justifying this decision? Yeah, for sure. It would be. For sure. Because um, they would just like confirm what all the owners, well, all the, the 30, the 30 other owners, what they don't want to happen. Unless there's another owner and then it swoops in and be like, hey, Lamar, there you go. 100% guaranteed. But anyway, we'll see. Um, 
Obviously, NFL owners are trying to avoid fully guaranteeing deals, but if another team were to make that offer and the Ravens matched it, would that be Steve Bashadi's justification for the calls? Let me know your thoughts. Keep spreading the love and positivity. And like EDC, if things go south, I'm out. <laughs> hey, um, no, nah, I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, like, like you said, it, if, the owner, if the owner signs Lamar um, to that offer sheet, uh, and it's not fully guaranteed That helps That helps Steve Bashadi and, and what he talked about And I'm sure what a bunch of other owners Have talked about too Behind closed doors and whatnot. But if, again If there's an owner That's willing to put his chest out like that And be like You know what I'm, I'm going against the grain Then that could and, and then the Ravens will be put in a predicament Like okay Okay Do we match So would they match If it's fully guaranteed And it's a lot of money Like if it Say for instance 300 mil fully guaranteed oof, That'd be crazy I don't think it'll get that high um, But if it's a deal And it's Say for instance It's a, a, a 300 mil deal And it's two What Deshaun got 230 It's a 300 mil deal And it's like 232 guaranteed Do the Ravens match it It's it's just it's it's crazy because we just don't know. We don't know what they're gonna do. I know again, like we talked about earlier, so many people feel like the Ravens are definitely gonna match whatever comes their way. Um, but would there be a team that will really just try to throw a wrench in the whole thing? Life after Lamar. Hope not. Next question came from my guy Jay Fire. He said, "Ain't Ravens, it's your boy Jay Fire here. Hope you and the fam are doing well." Uh, praying for your situation, and I appreciate you pushing through this freelance phase and still delivering that Ravens news. You're killing it per usual. I, I appreciate that, Jay Fire. And shout out to freelancers in the building. He said, don't know when you'll be reading this, but hopefully when you do, we still have Lamar. <laughs> so, yeah, we do for now. He said, we still have Lamar and have signed him to a long-term deal. Okay, well, not that part. Uh, but, however, I'm the painful and nightmarish case or in the painful and nightmarish case Lamar is not signed and traded what direction would you want the team to go quarterback wise I've heard Anthony Richardson has a draft pick but he is like Lamar and I actually would be mad if we drafted him because in no offense to Anthony you would be getting the great value version of Lamar instead of the real deal so if we trade Lamar I'd want to get a quarterback like CJ Stroud or Will Levis from Kentucky what are your thoughts what QB would you want again I hope this is just a fantasy situation that we will laugh at later but in case it's our new reality let me know what you think I hope your YouTube situation gets resolved and blessings on you, man. Peace. Appreciate that, Jay Fire. Um, yeah, as far as uh Anthony Richardson, I, I haven't looked too much at any of the quarterbacks. I only seen little little highlights here and there. Um with, with Anthony Richardson, I seen the the explosive plays. Um also I think I read something that said he completed what, fifty three percent of his passes in college, something like that. But anyway, um I just I feel like almost whatever you do uh would be a downgrade. If if there is no Lamar, um, and I would be I would just be scared for say for instance they draft somebody they draft the quarterback because I've seen so many people throw out the scenario say for instance Lamar is traded oh they draft the quarterback whether they draft Anthony Richardson Levis Stroud um, who else is out there uh, I forgot the other ones uh, but anyway whether this year or next year if they draft a the quarterback say for instance they do that people I've been seeing people throw out the scenario oh well they could really Build weapons and get weapons for this quarterback He'd be on a rookie deal He'd be saving a lot of money da, 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 da. My thought process would be like Okay so where was all this Where was this energy before Why didn't they do that before Where was the, this investment before Why, why, why wait till now my, 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 biggest, my biggest fear and, and, I, and I wouldn't have a problem with them Doing that for a new quarterback Because I would hope that the Ravens Learned their lesson with their previous quarterbacks the previous franchise quarterbacks, if Lamar ends up being a previous franchise quarterback for the Ravens, and he wouldn't be uh, the current or future franchise quarterback for the Ravens, uh, which is the scenario that we're discussing. Um, but I would just wonder, like, why didn't they do it for him? And then I would wonder, too, like, would their mindset really change just because they got a new quarterback? Would they be like, all right, well, yeah, let's really, let's really invest in the offense now big time. If they got a new quarterback And I don't know We we wouldn't know till we know But I just really wouldn't be convinced That oh the Ravens mindset And everything would just change overnight So that, that would be my biggest fear Next question came from my guy Stanley He said do you notice the NFL sending a statement uh, Through Lamar Jackson To the rest of the players Oh yeah they definitely trying to do that For sure But at the same time It's early It's very early We got a little less than a week Till he can start talking to people um, and he may have a little conversations like behind the scenes and stuff, but we got a week till he can officially 
to start talking to people, and, and he can officially start, or, or, they, or they can officially start offering him a, a deal. Um, but yeah, it, it, NFL would definitely be trying to send a message uh, through whatever teams reportedly are going to be out, and, and they because they don't want him to send a message to them. They they don't want him being a pioneer and, and really setting this whole thing on fire. Because if he does that, like if he is able to get a fully guaranteed contract. Which it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen, but if he is able to get a fully guaranteed contract, we don't even know if he wants that. We we, we just don't know. Some reports have said that he does. Some reports have said that he doesn't. But if he was able to get a fully guaranteed contract, and he's able to do it without no agent, oh my goodness, NFL would hate that. Agents would hate it. Owners would hate it. So yeah, they definitely trying to send a message to Lamar. But we'll see if that message gets received. Or it's declined. Collusion. Next question came from my guy Enonic. He said, "Anyway, hope you and the fam are feeling and doing better since YouTube's monetary mistake." <laughs> it's, it's all good, man. And getting that team, keep it clean. We'll make it through and come back stronger. Uh, my question for you is: Do you believe there will be a coordinated effort of collusion between the current NFL owners, not only to not to give Lamar a guaranteed deal, but also offer a deal between Les Watson and Murray to make an example of him? Mm. Oh. So between Les Watson and Murray, uh, I'll be glad when your thirty day wait is over and you can start freelancing. Uh, yeah, I, I will be too, man. Hopefully, it does get approved like right away, because that's that's another little scary part that I've been thinking about. Like, what if we reapply and they deny it? So, but I mean, we'll see. Because then I believe if you reapply and they deny it, you got to wait another thirty days. So, uh, we'll just see, man. I ain't gonna worry about it right now. Um, but anyway, um. Now, well, as far as what you said, not to give Lamar a guaranteed deal, but also offer a deal between Les Watson and Murray to make an example of him. Um, I think I think it, there will definitely be people that would want to offer less than Deshaun Watson. I mean, every deal that's been after Deshaun Watson uh, has been less than Deshaun Watson because uh, his was his is the, the, the upper echelon deal of the deals. Um, and it's fully guaranteed. Like fully all the way. That's that's your that's the, all Deshaun's money, all of it. So um, but as far as it being less than Kyler Murray's, ooh, to make an example of him, mm, I mean you could try that, but he just wouldn't sign the offer sheet. So I don't think they could really like. I don't think that would really move anything if somebody offered him a deal less than Kyler Murray's because he wouldn't sign the offer sheet. So nothing would come of it. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, I like the non-exclusive tag move uh, because now the Ravens don't have to keep trying and trying as the Ravens been saying. Another thing I didn't want to see is them trying to play him under the tag. Oh, you mean the exclusive tag. Uh, and then he gets hurt one or three games into the season and don't play the rest of the season. Uh, that's a lot of money that's sitting on the table if he gets hurt playing under the tag. But see, that's the thing. My opinion, because again, I, this this is just something that I had been saying for a long time. If it ended up getting to the franchise tag, which we're here now, I don't think he would play under the franchise tag. So I don't even think you would have to worry about your scenario. And the last question on this episode came from my boy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good? It's your boy, Flirt Nowinski, back again. Hope all is well with you and yours per usual. Appreciate it, man. He said, bro, did EDC ruin the franchise? The Lions got a haul for Stafford. They added the non-exclusive. So say the Dolphins give him the contract he wants and the Ravens don't beat the offer. Lamar goes for one first. No, he would go for two first, two. Uh, he said, oh, he said, this is a joke, bro. Then if the Ravens match the offer, you would be paying more than you would have been paying in the first place just to beat another team's offer. Bro, am I tripping? Or if, if say, for instance, what if a, a team offers a deal that's lower than what the Ravens originally offered? Then they will save a little bit of bread. So it, this whole thing could go either way. It could go so many different ways, man. Um. That obviously would be him either playing for the Ravens or not. So those are the two ways it could go. Uh, but anyway, he said, and to be completely honest, uh, the Ravens organization haven't slapped Lamar in the face. They have spit in Lamar's face. If it was any speculation of a rift between Lamar and the front office, this screams the start of a big rift. Shaking my head. They could have just signed him years ago. Uh, due to the big holes Lamar feels, once he's gone, they will see the grass isn't greener. But look, bro, on the bright side, uh, we will have a lot to talk about for the next five <laughs> For the next at least five years, winning two games a year, I'm gonna still be here bringing the heat. Peace and blessings. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's scary to think about. I don't think they will be that bad. Um, but I mean, everything all depends. I mean, everything all depends on how stuff uh, works itself out. Um, something that we we talked about a, a, a while back, uh, just a while back, is that um, if it got to the franchise tag, things could get really ugly. And 
things have gotten like ugly, ugly, ugly. So far with with, with the um with all the different reports of the team saying that oh we're not gonna be going after Lamar. And it's, mm, okay, okay. But again, like this whole pro- process, this whole situation, it's just a wait and see approach. So we'll keep waiting. And then we'll see what ends up happening, what ends up going up, what ends up going down, and uh, and we'll just go from there. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all watching this episode. Shout out to everybody who sent in a question. Um, And just like hopefully Lamar doesn't end up being, but we out. Yeah, this feels like a